He's known as the incurable optimist. He's also known uh, for many other things, including being the star of one of my favorite movies of all time, Back to the Future. Let's talk about the Michael J. Fox documentary, Still. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my review of the new Apple TV Plus documentary, Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. Uh, it's been a, a little while, actually, since I've reviewed a documentary on my channel. In 2020 and 2021, I watched a bunch of them. Uh, but last year, I don't know if I saw any, um, maybe one or two. And then uh, this year, I think this is probably the first. Um, but, you know, the subject matter really spoke to me. I love a uh, biographical movie about a celebrity. And, uh, you know, in terms of documentaries, that's you know, probably the bulk of what I've watched the last couple of years. Um, you know, I really like the, the Taylor Swift one they did a couple of years ago. But uh, this is a subject that speaks to me specifically. I grew up watching Michael J. Fox, as I think we all did, whether it was in Family Ties or Back to the Future, or if you grew up a little bit later, maybe you watched him in Spin City. Um, but uh, of course, his uh, Parkinson's diagnosis at age 29, uh, really shocked the world. I mean, he didn't reveal it to us uh, until a few years later, which they talk about in, in the movie. But um, anyway, before we even talk about uh, this movie any further, I want to welcome you into Damn Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. I do uh, TV and movie reviews on this channel, and I try to drop something new just about every day for you. Please consider subscribing down below. Even uh, click that notification bell so you get all the alerts uh, for when I drop new videos. Um, so not only... Have we, you know, kind of heard uh, a lot about this story and Michael J. Fox's, um, you know, struggle with with Parkinson's and, um, you know, going back even further, some of the, the stories about how he wasn't the first choice for Back to the Future and X, Y, and Z. Um, and I read one of his books. He's, he has, I think, four books out now. One of them does mention the uh, the incurable optimist uh, in the title that I mentioned up front. But uh, the one I read was the very first one called, I think, Lucky Man. Um, and that really, you know, kind of delved into how he figured out that he might have something going on uh, with his with his body um, and then ended up getting that Parkinson's diagnosis and then how he sort of hid it from people he was working with and stuff. So this is all stuff that, uh, that they go over in this documentary. And I, I will say, uh, well, it's streaming right now on Apple TV Plus. I already mentioned uh, Apple Plus, but it just dropped over the weekend, um, and so this is a, a brand new movie uh, to check out. But it was directed by Davis Guggenheim, um, whose name I was not familiar with, but uh, he is an Oscar-winning director. He directed An Inconvenient Truth, which uh, was a huge hit, obviously. Um, but uh, what's funny is I actually never saw that one, but I saw two other of his documentaries that I loved, Waiting for Superman, which was about the uh, public education system, and then It Might Get Loud, which is about uh, guitar gods, basically, uh, Jimmy Page, Jack White, and uh, The Edge from U2, just kind of, you know, talking about their techniques and riffing, and um, it was, I think even a non-musical person would, would get something out of it. So th this guy really knows how to um, find sort of the the uh, everyone can get this message and everyone can get behind this person this subject um that that we're dealing with in the documentary and so the subject here is michael j fox and uh, you know he is just one of the most loved people and, and i think he's always been one of those people you know i, I mean i remember obviously in the 80s and, and 90s it wasn't such a you know, a, a tabloid type world, TMZ didn't exist and all this kind of stuff. But you had the National Enquirer and, you know, some of, some of the rags uh, at the newsstand. But um, I really never heard growing up any, any sort of, you know, scandals with Michael J. Fox. You know, everybody really loved him. And I think a big part of that was, you know, that, that love for Back to the Future and the Family Ties TV show as well. Um, but then when he got his diagnosis, I think we all sort of collectively as, as a world were just like stunned, you know, um, especially because I know for me personally, you know, I think a lot of us, and he talks about this in the movie, think of it as, or thought of it as uh, more of an, an older person's, uh, issue. And here he was, you know, diagnosed with it at 29. So, um, this movie tackles, uh, the entire sort of career of Michael J. Fox, um, 
and obviously the Parkinson's, um, and kind of catches us up to speed of what's going on now with him and how he is sort of uh, deteriorating, um, you know, for lack of a better word. Um, and it's kind of shocking to see because I know I hadn't seen him really uh, for a few years, probably, you know, for a little while, he was doing guest spots on TV shows pretty frequently. He was on Rescue Me and Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Good Wife. Um, and I actually did see him in person at uh, the one and only Comic Con I went to. They had sort of a Back to the Future panel. Um, and I actually got my DVD. It's up there on the wall somewhere. I got uh, my DVD autographed by Bob Gale, um, who was uh, one of the producers and I think maybe co wrote the script. Um, but, you know, they did a panel with Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd and Leah Thompson. And this was probably 2015 or 16, I would say. Um, and, and, you know, he was still, um, doing pretty well at the time and he was still doing guest roles on shows and stuff. Um, but in the last couple of years, um, you know, as we see in this documentary, he's definitely uh, taken a bit of a turn and he talks very frankly about how he's probably not going to be here. Uh, in, in 20 years or less, um, you know, and, and perhaps uh, he will just fall one day and that will be that. He's He talked about how he's he's been falling a lot lately and stuff like that. Um, so the, uh, the interesting thing is there's such a big wealth of clips from different TV shows and movies that he's done over the years um, that this is a, a pretty like multimedia kind of documentary. Yeah, there's some interview clips and there's, uh, you know, a few scripted moments, I think, too, um, sort of setting up a um, an audiobook reading and, and sort of, um, you know, watching his kind of everyday movements and some, some stuff with his family. But a lot of things are interspersed with these uh, TV show or movie clips or quotes that sort of echo whatever he is talking about in the present day, um, you know, whether it's the history of his career or uh, the, the disease or, or anything else. And at first I thought, well, okay, this is sort of like maybe a, a little bit, uh, you know, MTV-ified or, or something. It's like all these quick cuts. Um, but actually, as a framing device, as the movie kept going, I found myself kind of fascinated that there were so many clips that dealt with so many different things. Um, you know, like when he talks about when he when he uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson's and, and was hiding it from everybody. There's a clip from his TV show that he was doing at the time, Spin City, where he, he there's a clip where he, his, the, his uh, co-star Barry Boswick says, you know, oh, Mike, you're, uh, you know, that's the character's name, Mike, Mike Flaherty or something or Flannery. Um, oh, Mike, you know, you're, you're hiding yourself from the world, you know, or something. And it was like, wow, that's exactly what he was talking about. So it's funny that there, there are so many clips um, from different things that were able to be used in a very interesting way here. And in that way, um, you know, it's edited together very well. And what started out as, like I said, a little bit maybe jarring or, um, you know, too kind of, you know, quirky or, you know, oh, let me just see an interview with him. Um, but they can do that on 2020 or something. You know, we don't need a documentary um, to, to do that. So Guggenheim really sort of um, gives us something that's not just kind of a sit down interview, but, um, you know, intersperses his whole life. And, and in the meantime, we can see him sort of from just a little kid. I think the earliest clip, probably he's 13 or 14, um, you know, up through some of his more recent stuff. Um, this is a, a man that, like I said, is truly beloved, I think, by all. Um, I'm not sure if this, other than kind of the present day stuff, um, was, you know, some sort of eye-opening revelation. You know, if you read, you know, any of his books, or specifically the one I read, uh, Lucky Man, where he sort of talks about a lot of this stuff, um, it won't necessarily come as a shock. And I do think maybe some of the, uh, like the narration or the voiceover clips they were playing might be taken directly from the audiobook version of Lucky Man. Because when he was saying things, I, I thought, man, that really sounds exactly familiar to me. I didn't look into that. I'm not sure if that's true. But um, if that's the case, that works too. Because his voice now is a little bit more, you know, gravelly, a little bit more shaky. And that was, you know, almost 20 years ago, I think, at this point. So it makes sense, you know, to, to maybe, you know, pull pull from that uh, if we're able to. But it, he's put together a very, very compelling movie for sure. Um, like I said, if you read the book, maybe some of this stuff won't be new to you. But, um, but he's a fascinating man, certainly. And uh, just, you know, it, it, yes, it's sad to watch sometimes, but... 
Um, his positivity shines through as it always has. The incurable optimist um, is really an, an apt moniker for Michael Fox, for sure. Um, I really liked this movie. Uh, very much. And it's on Apple TV Plus for streaming right now. I give still a Michael J. Fox movie an A-. minus. Uh, all right. I, I guess I'll have to check out some other documentaries. I didn't realize until this movie how many I've missed over the last uh, year and a half or so. So uh, anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Dan Reviews It. Bye.